yesterday, in order to explain the divine mercy rays, I showed you one is the cleansing part, which comes from repentance. And I showed you the other is the empowering part, which comes from the Holy Spirit, both together. And to prove the point, I went to the first maha speech that St. Peter gave. The first. What is to be done, he said, repent, number one, you'll be forgiven. Two, you'll receive the Holy Spirit. Now, yesterday I took it a little late, but today I want to go to the beginning of that speech. Because at the beginning of that speech, when he began that speech, St. Peter spoke so powerfully and he began with young people. Do you know he spoke about the Holy Spirit from the very beginning? That's why I invite you to go to chapter 2 and verse number 14 onwards. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. Verse number 16, instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. See, if first starts quoting scripture. And scripture about whom? About young men and young women. For well, he says in verse number 17, the last days God says, I will, I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters, underline, underline, sons and daughters, will proclaim my message. It's a reference to the young people, sons and daughters. One line later, young men will see visions. He underline the word young men. And last of all, he speaks about people like us, old men. This is the effect of the Holy Spirit, especially on young people. You know, I told you yesterday that the first thing that the Holy Spirit, when he comes like a wind, I told you yesterday, new me, you, M, A, new ma. Air which is in movement. And I guess they have got uh, words like pneumonia from that. Because in pneumonia also there's wind getting into your lungs, getting out in an uneasy way. Pneuma. Pneuma is never still air. It is air which is moving. It is wind. And yesterday, while we were preaching, we pointed to Nicodemus, and the day the Lord saw that Nicodemus is repeated again. And to Nicodemus, the Lord tells him about the nature of the Holy Spirit. He says, it's wind. It's like wind. But it is unpredictable. You have to just surrender. So most of us sometimes, our lives are so ordered and so planned that when the Holy Spirit brings a little disorder in our life and brings a little unpredictability, we don't like it. And therefore, we submit to the Holy Spirit for a while. But then later, we go back to our own ways, our own calculations, and make ourselves miserable. So the Holy Spirit came. In fact, when he came on Pentecost Day, he came like a wind. And with the wind, he brought the tongues of fire. You can, you can understand the tongues of fire on each head. A tongue is a tongue, but this was a tongue of fire. And the tongue of fire combined with the human tongue in each of them to make us more than normal men. You understand? The tongue of fire that came, it was a tongue of fire, but it was a tongue. A tongue speaks. That tongue of fire, when it came, it united with this tongue and set this tongue on fire. So we became more than normal human beings. Till then, we were homo sapiens. You know, understand the scientific term. Homo sapiens is supposed to be the man. You see, man has emerged from uh, whatever, apes and monkeys, whatever it is. The highest level of man is homo sapiens. But on Pentecost day, we went higher than homo sapiens. You understand that? Please understand, we went higher than Homo sapiens. Heaven touched earth that day. 
and the tongue which was from heaven of fire touches the human tongue. From that time there is no rest, as the prophet Jeremiah says. Even if I want to close my mouth and not speak about the Lord, I cannot. Compare it to ourselves. Our tongue speaks a lot about business, about money making, about other things. See? And we have no rest to leave that. This is not a full, we are not fully lifted. We are still at the homo sapien level. For one who is lifted above the homo sapien level, the tongue cannot but wag and tell about Jesus. Cannot. No rest. No question of nervousness. I don't know what to say. Because it's a tongue of fire that has touched your human tongue. And I told you yesterday, the Holy Spirit, when it came as a wind, what is the effect of wind on a fire which has all ashes on it? The ashes are blown away. So even if, second effect, even if your heart which was burning at one time for the Lord, ashes have gathered because of various other things you're too much preoccupied with. He came and blew. He blew it away. And when the ashes are blown, what will happen? The fire will start again. So fire in the heart, fire on the tongue. Can you understand that? And different tongues, different languages. See, if they all came out and started talking only Hebrew language, then people there would have said, I'm going to revive and thank God. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, Hank. No, the Holy Spirit's intention was very clear now. He wanted to make us, number one, not merely homo sapiens, but more than that, more superior than homo, homo sapiens, the normal man. One whose tongue is set on fire and very heart is set on fire, that heart which was covered with all preoccupations of human relationships and money and getting settled and other things and marriage and this thing. The ashes were blown off. And when the Holy Spirit comes as a wind like that, he blows, especially into the young, he blows off all the fog in their mind. Because young people, we also have been young at one time, and we know the fog which develops our mind does not allow us to see God. Youth is a time of fun and frolic. It should always be like that. But it should never fog the mind where the truth is. Unfortunately, because of friendly effect, because of effect of the culture, effect of the people around us, effect of all the adventures we want to have in the young age, a fog sort of develops in young minds. And the Holy Spirit blows out that fog. He blows out the fog. Have you ever seen fog in the morning? And you just put a powerful air current on it or air flow, fog will disappear. He blows out the fog from the young people's mind. And he says, he says, young people will have visions. Wow. Young people will have visions. Predicted by the prophet Joel. Now being quoted. That's why you had a large number of young people joining. See, if you see later, you will see all these people, Philip, etc. All young men, they were not even married. The fog was blown out. They saw the truth. And they could not but fall in love with the Lord. Because when you fall in love first time with the Lord, uh, moved by the Holy Spirit, that holy pneuma, he turns your heart in such a way you're mad after the Lord. You don't know what you're doing. Check out and see sometimes Divine Center. Whenever we have these youth retreats, check out and see when they come back from the youth retreat. They're ready to do anything for the Lord. By the way, the Margaon prayer meeting started because of people who came, youth who came from Divine Center. They were mad. They wanted to clap. They would sing. The first meeting is to be held in Fatima Convent, not even in the present place where we are having it. And there in the gymnasium, no, with jeans, with all of them, some of them with their scooter keys tied here to the waist, dancing, and for the first time, taking the name of the Lord. They're ready to kneel, they're ready to do anything. They would sing and their voices were not at all in unison. They would sing at their various planes. But for them, it is beautiful. The young man doesn't think, the young woman doesn't think. Because they're enveloped by the love of God, thanks to the blowing of the fog in their mind by the Holy Spirit. And then what happens is, 
after that, they start doing all sorts of things which they don't do. They start reading the Bible. And they start actually walking for mass, going far off to the church every day. See? And everyone is amazed. Some of us also, when we began, you see, how oh, we would start going for mass, we would start doing this, take responsibilities, become active crusaders. We are young. At that moment, the Lord had blown off the fog. So don't find fault sometimes with the young people. Sometimes I find earlier when we used to have functioning and at public programs, people used to criticize the young because they're dancing and they're so madly doing things and, you know, singing loudly. No, don't find fault with them. Because after all, they are just experiencing it. Yesterday I explained to you how faith should be like a small little electric fuse. Electric fuse. You go and take off the fuse in your house now and see what will happen. The house will go black, or at least parts of the house will go black. It all depends on that fuse. And what is in that fuse? A small little wire which does not resist too much. Because it does not resist too much, it can conductivity is higher. I explained yesterday to you. In the same way, when we resist the word too much, there is less obedience. No conductivity of faith. That's why they choose the wire, either silver, either copper, which has lower resistance. And this I came to know thanks to my discussion with all my electrical colleagues here and elsewhere. So God gave me an idea because it was, as I told you, a day of electric shutdown for the South of the world. Just whenever there is great resistance, then that wire cannot be used because it cannot conduct well. In the same way, when people have great resistance to my word in their lives, they will not be able to conduct. But happy the man who is like the silver or copper wire, less resistance, greater obedience. No? So the secret of that fuse is that tiny little wire. And I'm quite sure, as I told you yesterday, our Lord would have, in this modern technical society, would have not said mustard seed, but he would have said, if you had faith like that tiny little electrical fuse with that tiny little wire, you would receive the full power of God. And if you don't understand this, then just go and take out the fuse from your house. Take it out now and see what will happen to your house. The full extent of power supply will just go. You understand? So the youth, when they first receive the Holy Spirit, they're blown by it. They don't know. But then they settle down. They settle down. They're blown. Like the youth, when they get married, oh, they don't know. The first few days is like heaven. And darling, and darling, and darling, we eat together. Love each other so much, hold on to each other so much. You see, after six months, one year, two years, you won't see the same behavior. It will settle down. And that is the secret. You cannot always have a high. You have to settle down. Most marriages break because they don't understand this. And the bride or the bridegroom will come to me several months or years later and say, that, brother, it was not like this at the beginning. So much of time he used to give me or she used to give me. So much of attention is to appreciate, etc. in the beginning. But now it is not there. So it is with the relationship with Jesus. In the beginning, it is a high current. It is a high current. Huh? Marriage also at the beginning, high current, but success of the marriage is not to keep it always high current, but to always see that it runs, whether it is bad times or good times, in the same atmosphere of love. So it is with the relationship with the Lord. At first it is a high. Huh? So the youth are like that. When a newcomer who doesn't know how electricity, huh? electricity, there are people who are well experienced. When they touch the live wire you know, in the fuse, huh? and if there's current, they will say, oh, oh, they will say, that's all. Have you seen an experienced light man or experienced electrician, when he touches the wire and he finds current, they will say, oh. But a person who has never touched that wire before, has never touched that fuse before, he touches and he gets the same current, he'll say, oh! You understand? Because they're doing it the first time. Now you understand what happens to the youth. It's, oh, 
Oh, it's wonderful. But with scripture, they will remain. They will be faithful. They will grow. Some don't remain. They are not faithful. They go. They want only a high. So they will go if so-and-so preacher is there, so-and-so band is playing. Hey, damn good music here, yeah, let's go. That's not going to last long. Huh? But the fact of the matter is they get blasted at the beginning. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. The high he gives you. But the real test is after receiving that high, continue with the Holy Spirit. It may not be as high as you felt it first time, but it is constant. All I want, the Lord says, is your constant love. All I want is your constant love. But what do I see, the Lord says? Your love is like the morning dew. You say a lot of things and then it just disappears like the morning dew. That's why yesterday when talking about repentance, I made it a point to emphasize that there are various kinds of repentance. The first repentance is the repentance of the sins and we did. I went for witchcraft, I did masturbation, I did sexual sins, I cheated this one, I told lies, you come into the renewal. But then God blesses you, he settles you. And slowly as you settle, then comes a different kind of separation from God. The things given to you start making you drift away from God. Whenever this stability, security, self-assuredness, and we saw yesterday, and if you want, you can show them today, 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse number one. When Rehoboam, had established his authority as king, he and all the people abandoned the law of the Lord. See, when it happened, only after he was well established. When the moment security comes into our life, could you show some other versions of this line from the various other Bibles? When the rule of Rehoboam was established and he grew strong. This is very good. You underline it. Established and he grew strong. See? So in the renewal also, no, as things settle down, we get a job, maybe we get married, maybe we have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, maybe everything is becoming secure. That is the time that security no longer remains security. We start clinging to the security and we leave the Lord. Of course, it doesn't happen in a big way, which can be seen to others. But the fact of the matter is, listen to me, you will start drifting away from the Lord. You start drifting away. And this is what the Lord meant when he said, I know how much you're working for me, but the love you had for me at the beginning, you don't have now. You don't have now. That urge is not there. I tell my team members, I tell the people in the head office also. I say, look, we are doing our work. We are working here nine to six. It does not mean that after six o'clock, we are disconnected from the Lord, no. And I'm glad to say in, my, in the head office also, if people are sick or they're disconnected, and they long, they, they phone me, brother, when is the next meeting? We just want to hear. We want to see the other co-members. We want to. See, they feel that urge. It's a very dangerous thing if you're not feeling any urge. The moment you are at home, you're a moment out of the prayer meeting, you're disconnected like a submarine. It's very dangerous. It means that you don't feel. You're just a nine to six job guy. You're just nine to six for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you're 11 to one o'clock, two hours of the prayer meeting for the Lord Jesus. Or you're six to eight p.m. for the Lord Jesus. No, that urge remains. See? That's what the Lord says. You do so much for me, but you don't have that love you had for me at first now. He's being very frank. He puts it straight to you. He says, no. And really, I prefer, no. I really prefer if there's such people. I really prefer they go I, I say also openly, I say, Chill, you take a break and you go. And you test and see whether you can survive without the Lord Jesus. No? Test and see. Go away. Go away from ACJ. And see how is life that time. Because unless we point it out today to them, we're going to have this problem sometime or the other, in the year next or the year next. You know? So you can make out the symptoms when the urge is not there. You understand? No? And look at this line, Rehoboam, this man with a big name, was the son of a big man. He was the son of Solomon and the grandson of David himself. And he held to the Lord and he became king. 
and look at that line. When he was established and he grew strong, he abandoned the Lord. And he carried the others also with him, he and all Israel. And if you read further, you will see how it led them into worshipping idols. So whenever we are self-assured, everything life is comfortable for, comfortable for us. Now we have a term for it in the high technology society. When we are in a comfort zone, we say, that is the time it opens the door for idols in our life. Even if you are serving the Lord, you are comfortable and you are serving the Lord. You're getting a salary, whatever it is, this thing, that thing, you have the fellowship, you're attending the prayer meetings, you're doing all things, okay. A comfort zone develops. That is the time you start making your own plans. This is the time you get carried away by illusions. That is the time you take your eyes off the Lord. That is the time you start drifting away. Didn't it happen in the Old Testament? The people, we are told in Genesis, reached a flat ground. And then they said, hey, this is a flat ground. Because all of Israel was mountainous. When they reached a flat ground, a nice place, they said, let's settle here. And let us find a way how to reach God. We'll build a tower which reaches heaven. So simple. So even in their language, they use the language of God. Because God in the beginning had used that language. Let us create man, he said. So they imitated God and they said, let us build a tower. So they imitated even God's word. It's possible to repeat and quote God's word, but your heart has gone far away from God. They made their own plans. And they said that let's make a name for ourselves. Genesis chapter 11. Sometimes read it. I'm not showing it to you today. Genesis 11. Let us make a name for ourselves. So religious life and indeed the life you're serving the Lord becomes an opportunity Make myself a good name, good preacher, a good musician, a person who sings well. I do Koregan's praise and worship. This is what, from where is this coming? Huh? It's coming from your false securities, the flat land you settle on. As this guy, Rehoboam, when he was established and he grew strong, he abandoned. And later, idols. And then the idol may take the form of your marriage partner, your family, your business, your other things. I'm speaking them frankly to you because I don't want, I want, believe me, I want all of us who are here on the screen to be in heaven. I'm not concerned with the work. I'm not come here to impress you or to crank up some atmosphere where you get moved by the spirit. I'm not interested. That's the spirit's job. He'll do it. My job is to tell the truth. And I'm telling you one form of repentance which we don't have today is we don't realize this. That we our self-assuredness, our comforts, they make us secure. They make us make our own plans. They make us drift away from the Lord, as the Rohibom did. Other idols develop. And we think we are in the core, we think we are in the prayer group. It's okay, I'm assured to heaven. No, because if you are assured to heaven, after repentance would come the full blast of the Holy Spirit. I showed you yesterday. After the red rays came the white rays. The full empowering of the Spirit will come to you. As it comes, and that's why youth cannot handle it. So to be gentle, gentle, don't correct them. I don't like actually to say anything to them when they're excited and all. That's their way. But you and I who have been with the Lord for some time, we know the, the like the live eye is really powerful. If you touch it, you'll get electrocuted. The Holy Spirit will fill you with power, but we never take him for granted. That way our love becomes constant for the Lord at all times. In the words of St. Paul, nothing can separate me from the love of my Lord. Even if my business increases, even if some more wealth comes to me, even if a dozen children come to me, or even if anything else is given, it cannot remove my dedication to the Lord. And yesterday I gave you the example of Mary of Magdala. She was secure, like Rohobam. Earlier she was bad, prostitute. Earlier go to this man, that man. It is quite possible, I say to you today, that even when she first met Jesus, she looked at him lustfully. And she had seven evil spirits in her. Jesus removed that. She fell in love with the Lord. She should have drifted apart. Now she was secure. She was established. She grew strong. 
She should have developed some other idol. But what do you see? She's the perfect example of the resurrection tomb. She comes there in the night, doesn't fear anything. And she even tells the gardener, she doesn't know the gardener is Jesus, fails to recognize him, but still, she says, I will carry the body of my Lord. Just tell me where he is. Can she do that? A woman who is physically weak, but spiritually so strong. A woman who refuses to allow the comforts given, the securities, the self-assuredness given to allow her to drift away from the Lord. She holds on to the Lord. No? That is it. That is what is required. And today I wanted to speak to you also about one aspect that happens is we are filled with joy. Now, if you look at uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, Yon, when the Holy Spirit came, a lot of things started happening. People were all amazed. They were astounded. They could not make sense of what was happening. I think one man gives a speech, 3,000 people are converted, and then they start meeting in small groups every day, as though they have no business, no dhanda. They're doing that and they're learning from the apostle. Strange things were happening. Strange things. In chapter 3, verse number, verse number 11 captures the mood in Jerusalem. Chapter 3 and verse number 11. As the man held on to Peter and John in Solomon's porch, as it was called, the people were amazed. See? Put a circle around the word amazed. See? The atmosphere in Jerusalem was one of amazement. How can this happen? How can this happen? They were amazed. A lot of new things happening. In the next line, verse number 12, when Peter saw the people, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why are you surprised? Why are you staring at us? Do you think it was means by our power or godliness that we made this man walk? See the word surprise, put a circle around surprise. This was the atmosphere in Jerusalem. Certain things which could not be understood were happening all around. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will see it happening for you also. You may not have your problem solved, but you will see different things happening. And he putting out his hand, the Holy Spirit, and saying, though you feel I'm, I'm unpredictable, you just hold on to me, I will lead you. That's the advice Jesus gave Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, do you know a person born of the Spirit is like this? The wind blows anywhere. He doesn't know where the wind is coming from and where it is going. But he can only feel it. He can hear the sound. The Holy Spirit is very unpredictable. Are you ready to lend your hand to him and say, lead me anywhere? Mary did that. Huh? Without waiting for a second, she said, let it happen to me. Are you willing to say that? Today you have risen to the high post of coordinator general, high post of elders, high post of co-members. Are you willing to say to the Holy Spirit, lead me where you want, do what you want in my life? Or is it that you put spokes and you put a fence and say, okay, lead me everywhere, anywhere you want, but don't touch these areas in my life. This I want to be secure. I want. I want to do it my way. Huh? Uh, he, he cannot blow, no. You understand now? Do you understand why he cannot blow? Why, do you understand now why people are there at some time for some time and they go away from the Lord? Huh? They go away from the Lord, they, are, they get into worldly things and all that thing. Huh? So what you and I have is a very rare thing. 